laboratory to be using architectural engineering, and there are three main spaces which I'm going to show. There is a vertical transmission suite over there where uh, we can test the sound insulation properties of floors. There is a horizontal transmission suite where we can test the sound insulation properties of partitions, walls, windows, doors. And the last one we're going to go into is the anechoic chamber where we can test the sound properties uh, of sound sources mainly and other types of tests we can do that I'll explain. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so basically, you know, acoustics is one of the aspects we look at in architecture engineering. So architecture engineering is about making building comfortable to live in. Mm -hmm. And there are many things we need to do, thermal comfort. We need to make sure that the building you know, has good thermal comfort. We, if we need it, we might need to have ventilation, heating, air conditioning. We need to provide proper lighting, how we can make use of daylight. And then there is acoustics, which is making sure that, for example, you don't hear your neighbors, you don't hear traffic noise, uh, or if you're designing a conference space, you need to have good speech intelligibility or a classroom, you need to hear each other properly. Yeah. Or if it's a space for music, you need to have certain qualities again that needs to be achieved. So we can test some of the things in this acoustic lab. So first of all, we'll go to in the vertical transmission suite. And there are effectively two rooms. If you take the lower room, there is a room upstairs. We put a floor over this big concrete ring beam and we can test how much sound goes through it. Now it's a specially built facility because uh, we need to make sure that there is very little sound coming from the side walls, which is why we put a very heavy element which minimizes any sound coming from the sides and probably quantifies only sound that goes through the floor. Uh, so we can test two types of sounds, airborne sound. Airborne sound is sound generated in the air, for example, when I speak, when you hear uh, anything coming out of loudspeaker, television, music, these are all airborne sources. And in fact, when you put a loudspeaker, you measure the sound in this room, you measure the sound in the room upstairs, you can work out how much sound is being transmitted. But there is another type of sound that we need to be able to test, which is impact sound. So that's when you hear footsteps, for example. So that's when you hear an object dropped on the floor. Uh, those are impact sound sources that are generated in the structure, and we use a different type of device. It's not a loudspeaker. We use what is called a tapping machine. It's a specially built machine standing over the floor with some hammers, and that inputs a force into the floor, and we can measure how much noise we hear in the room below. So, Especially built facilities, there are very few of those around the UK. There are only three full uh, vertical transmission suites. So we do get, you know, on top of doing research, you get for students, for projects, or even assignments with courses. We also do consultancies, so companies come and test their products in a facility like this one. Okay, that's the first space. Second one, before we come in, you can see that there are springs under the chamber. So this space is isolated from the rest of the building. Uh, that's to make sure that you don't have vibrations that enter the room, and that's for accuracy of the measurements. Uh, it's very advanced. A few buildings have such things. You might have springs under concert halls, for example. Certain concert halls might be close to railway stations, areas where there are quite a lot of vibrations. To have very low background noise inside and good sound quality, you need to actually isolate the building from the surroundings. So what this does is that it makes sure that any noise, any vibration that might be happening in the building are not transmitted uh, through the floor inside the room. It's quite expensive, okay, but that uh, ensures that you have accurate measurements. So if we come inside, It's very much the same idea as the vertical transmission suites. We have an opening and we have a test element. So right now we have a partition and we can test how much sound goes also with that partition. And we're testing only the amount of sound in this case. Okay, so we have a loudspeaker, for example, we have a speaker at the moment at the corner, and you would use some of the meters like the one in here that measure the sound pressure level. You can measure the sound pressure level in this room. Sound pressure in the room next door, you can work out how much sound is transmitted. 
This room we're in is a recurrent chamber, so it's very decorative, it's hard materials, it's concrete floor, concrete ceiling and brick walls, so all materials that reflect sound a lot. And that ensures that the sound field is very uniform. It doesn't vary too much across the room, because again, for accuracy, we normally measure different positions, but you don't need too many positions to ensure good accuracy. The other thing that the recovery chamber does, it makes sure that there is a uniform sound because of the partition. So again, it's all specially built to ensure you have accuracy of your measurements. Uh, we can test sound insulation, or we can use the recovery chamber in isolation to do other types of tests. For example, we can test some of the sound absorption properties of materials. So we can bring in a material in here, we can quantify the change in reverberation time, the reverberation time quantifies effectively how long the sound is present in the room, and we can then work out the absorption property of that material. Okay, so that's another common test that is done in here. Uh, other things you might notice uh, uh, some plywood diffusers, which is effectively again to randomize uh, how the sound is Surfaces, you might get some resonances in the room, which we don't want. A resonance means that you have variation in sound as you move across the room. Okay, so I can show you the next space. Uh, incidentally, I can show you that's, for example, one experiment one student is currently doing. So we had some uh, tire crumbs, recycled tire crumbs that we wanted to use for uh, resilience materials. So we've just made different samples with different sizes of the crumbs, uh, different ratios of the amount of resin we use to actually get uh, the crumbs uh, working you know, as, a, as a single element effectively. Uh, different amounts of material as well, and we're just testing that in the vertical suites. So we're putting that on the floor just under the tapping machine and we can see how much it can reduce some of the impact sound transmission. Uh, th that's quite a nice project because it shows that this works quite well and even better than some commercially available materials. So the next room is the anechoic chamber. This room is the opposite of a reverberant chamber. So you have wedges made of glass fiber that absorb most of the sound. And you have those wedges covering not only the walls and ceiling, but also the floor. So that provides a complete, what we call free field, which means no reflections from any surfaces in the room. Uh, the wedges, you have that type of shape. They are fairly deep and that ensures that you have a very large surface area. Okay, so you can increase the amount of absorption, because more surface means more absorption. The other uh, reason for the geometry is that if you think about a sound ray incident, it's reflected towards the inside. So just geometrically, you really minimize any chance of sound bouncing back into the room. Effectively, what the room does is you are in a space, but acoustically, it's like you're in no space. You have removed the effect of the room, because you don't have any of the reflections. So for example, when I speak, you just hear my voice coming directly from me to you, but you don't hear any of the reflections coming from surfaces. And that's what you need if you want to measure properties of sound sources. So let's say you have a loudspeaker, you want to know how much sound comes out of it, but you also want to know in which directions it propagates. You would need to do such a measurement in an anechoic chamber, because in any other room, you would be measuring also the room acoustic properties not only the source, but the actual space. So here you remove the effect of the space effectively. Uh, another thing you can do in here, you can go do an echoic recording. So somebody playing an instrument can come, you can record that, and that can be used with some software to actually recreate that sound in a space for which you have a model. So let's say you're building a concert hall, you have a model of that concert hall, it's all virtual, it's in a software. You can play that anechoic recording with the model and hear that instrument as it will sound in that concert hall. Now that's quite powerful, that's called oralization. It's quite powerful because you can hear effectively how the building will sound and 
now acoustic consultants use that quite a lot to convince their clients rather than having reports with a lot of numbers that the client doesn't understand. You can just listen to the building. You can then make changes and qualitatively perceive what the changes make in terms of uh, the acoustics. So you can do th those anechoic recordings. You can use the room for doing some listening tests. I use it quite extensively for research because you have very low background noise. So you are not really affected by noises around you. The sound level is so low that you can probably concentrate on whatever sound you're testing. Effectively, the sound is, uh, the background noise is, is really low so that you can start hearing your heartbeats. You can start hearing blood, going through your blood vessels. And in very well insulated anechoic chambers, you can go down to the threshold of hearing, which is the quietest sound you can hear, zero decibels, which is a particle of air going against your eardrum. Okay, so really, really quiet sounds. You need to stay quite long to get used to the space and to start hearing, effectively start hearing your body and sounds you're not really used to. Uh, we had the BBC coming here, for example, on, on a program they did on silence. And that's one of the few spaces where you can actually experience silence. So it's quite unusual for people. Some people tend to feel uncomfortable. That's mainly related to the balance. Our sense of balance is related mainly to vision, but also to hearing. And we are used to have sounds surrounding us to keep our sense of balance. That reference is missing when you are in the anechoic chamber. And some people tend to feel uncomfortable, especially people who have some hearing difficulties like tinnitus, which is like a ringing in the ears, they will just start hearing that and they feel really uncomfortable and can even lose their balance. So they tend to normally not like to stay and just walk out of the room. Okay.